So today is my um, second lecture about Hochschild cohomology. I'm going to uh, proceed from the place where I stopped last time. So I uh, was going to describe the way Hochschild homology and cohomology theories um, show up from the point of view of some pure homological algebra. So let me recall you a few definitions. Uh, first of all, say that um, write a module. So A is an algebra on a ring, more generally. Uh, so K is the ground field. Right, and we say that a module, an A module P, right A module P, is a projective if for any diagram of the form P to M. Here I have epimorphic morphism from some third module, N. There exists the dotted line, the dotted arrow, uh, which covers uh, the, the diagram, which makes this diagram commute. For any map F and any map G, there exists they exist some uh, phi. Equivalently, as I explained, this is uh, <coughs> the case <coughs> um, I also assume that it is always finitely generated. generated just to keep on, to be on the safe side. But equivalently, it means that P uh, is a direct summoned in a free module, in a free A module. Now, mm, that was the first definition. The second definition is the following. Suppose you have some A module M, then we say that projective resolute resolution of M is the sequence of projective A modules P0, P1, P2, and so on, with a uh, morphism in them, let me call it just some partial D. Of course, it's assumed that that D square is always equal to zero. But another piece of data is the augmentation map epsilon from P0 to M. Uh, all these maps are uh, A-module maps. Right? And the assumption is that this diagram is in fact a cyclic, that this, 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 this uh, complex is in fact exact. The sequence is exact. The sequence is exact. That is to say, at every stage, the kernel of the map D is equal to the image of the map D on the right. And similarly, the kernel of the map epsilon is equal to the uh, image of D on the right. And moreover, epsilon is onto, because of course, uh, if you consider the right hand side from the M, from M it will have zero. Or if you go further to the left from M, you get zero. Uh, now, 
is called augmentation, augmentation, right? Now, uh, the general, uh, going into the general theory from homological algebra, the following is true. And the very mild assumption on the nature of the algebra, I think um, almost anything can work. Uh, maybe some, I don't know. Um, well, complex numbers, so sorry, uh, integers as the ground field also works. So I think uh, it's rather the assumption about the uh, the category of modules that we consider. It's not the, because sometimes you need to introduce some further uh, relations or further conditions on the modules. Not just, you don't just consider the module A modules. Yeah? But under, under very mild conditions, under very mild condition, I think if you just consider the right modules, it's always true. Conditions. They always exist. They always exist. Projective resolutions. And in some sense, they are unique. Uh, if, that is to say, if you have. Uh, two resolutions of M by P and by Q. Then you can always uh, construct this, a chain map from one resolution to another in both directions. And one can show that these chain maps actually are um, inverse to each other up to a chain homotopy. Chain maps, maps vertical, denoted by the vertical arrows are mutually inverse up to homotopy. Homotopy inverse. Actually, the construction of these maps is pretty simple. You just observe that when you have this diagram, you just look at this diagram as a map from uh, Q to M, which is epimorphic, then by the universal property of projective maps, or projective modules, you have a map from P0 to Q0, right? And then you repeat this procedure here. You have a map onto the kernel of M, and then you can actually proceed like this, and so on and so forth. OK. So now, what is the purpose of having these resolutions? The purpose is as follows. Suppose you have a right A module, M, And in the left end, A model, N. Then you can consider the tensor product of M and N over A. Since A is in algebra, is a ring, uh, the, the, the functor which associates uh, tensor product uh, to a pair of modules does not preserve exact sequences, right? Um, so when you now take the tensor product of N of A with P, this diagram is no more exact 
So in some sense, you replace m by p, by the resolution. Of course, when I say d here, it is d, when I write d, it is d times 1. And hence, we can consider its <coughs> homology. So by definition, the homology of this complex, P tends with N with respect to the differential D tends 1, is called the torsion, the higher torsion groups of M and N. And that's because, like I'm telling you, because when you tensor it with N, you can earn something. It's actually <laughs> experimental fact. You can just consider some examples and see that something new appears. Yeah, the tensor product needs not preserve the kernel. So see, the tensor product can uh, extend, uh, you know, make the kernel larger, so on and so forth, right? Um, it's actually a pretty wild thing. Not very wild, mildly wild, let me put it this way. Okay, so this is called the torsion group, the high torsion groups of M and N, and sometimes they people write it as as this, the derived functor, uh, the left derived functor of M and A, of a tensor product of M and N. Well, this is a bit more exotic and uh, it has some further meaning. So for us, this is enough. Okay? So this is, a, I, I'm not going to go into the theory of derived functors, left derived functors, right derived functors. Just don't want this. I think this is left or right. I'm not sure about this, but it's left or right. I think it is left. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, by the way, I always, I always confuse left and right functors. Oh, this is just the standard way to introduce torsion uh, groups. And I'm going to show that uh, Hochschild homology is, in fact, a torsion group. And that will give us the opportunity to change resolutions. And that will enable us to compute this Hochschild homology in certain situations. Because in general, the, the task of computing Hochschild homology and cohomology is pretty wild. The uh, complex which computes them is the complexes that compute them are quite large. And it's not even clear whether the, uh, it's not, all, it's not even, even always possible to say that the homology and homology groups are finite dimensional. They can be infinite dimensional. And well, similarly, if you take uh, similarly, if you take uh, instead of the functor of tensor product, you take uh, for a uh, right a module. So what are the new letters I can use? M and let it be A. I'm not sure about this. N, right, and, and prime. Uh, we can consider the spaces of a linear homomorphisms from M into N prime. And they are not ex exact again. And this function is not exact again. So it does not preserve the exact sequence. So if we take the groups, uh, the homomorphism groups from P0 to N prime, from uh, P1 to A prime, to N prime, and so on. You get another complex, which needs not be 
con um, acyclic anymore and you define the high ext <laughs> extension groups to be the cohomology of this new complex. I'm not going to, 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 to define the differential because differential is of course induced by this with the differential in the resolution. And this is denoted by x a star of m and n prime. So my <laughs> nearest purpose is to prove that Hochschild homology and cohomology can be described in terms of high torsion and high extension groups. Extension again is when you just write the right functions, right? I think it is right. I'm not sure. <laughs> I always mix. I always make I uh, you know, make mistakes about left and right. So don't trust me very much. <laughs> it might be the other way around. Uh, there is, yeah. Not by geometrical, I'd say. I think it's it's rather historical. Um, well, in no dimensions, you can actually show that this group, for instance, is described by classes of equivalences of extensions of M and N, mutual extensions. I don't remember which is on the left, which is on the right, so I'm not going to use the proper words, but uh, you can show that the first extension group is described precisely by the first by these short exact sequences, like the classes of equivalence of extensions. And similarly, uh, the torsion groups they appear from uh, again from short exact sequences. They are kernels of certain maps, and they first appeared, I think, in uh, the study of homology in the universal uh, coefficients theorem for topological spaces. So when you have topological space and you know it's uh, integer cohomology, a homology, you want to uh, compute its cohomology or homology with coefficients in certain ring, in some other ring, in some other uh, group, abelian group. And for this, you need to use the so-called uh, universal coefficients theorem. And there, uh, these torsion groups appear very, in, in a very natural way, the first torsion group. And uh, yeah, that's uh, how they, and they actually, they, uh, I think they, they, they first, they, they have the name torsion because when you work, when you consider cohomology with real coefficients, you just obtain the, uh, the vector spaces. So homology and homology with real coefficients, they do not detect any torsion in the uh, proper meaning of this word of cohomology group. So, but when you change coefficients, actually it's torsion appear. <laughs> so, <laughs> hence the name of these groups. Because how do you form the tensor product of two right models or A? You need to be able to move A from left to right. You see, <laughs> it's not very natural to go from left again to the left, and that's so people use left and right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me now show that Hochschild homology and cohomology are particular cases of this construction. To this end, I'm going to show that the, uh, the complex which computes this cohomology can be described in, the, in, the, in terms of such functor with, uh, with respect to certain very particular uh, resolution P. So first of all, I'm going to say that what, 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 
what uh, algebra A I am going to use. It is not the, uh, the, the, the original algebra A itself, it is some other algebra constructed from A. So let A be an algebra. Uh, we can consider A uh, and uh, A op, which I will note AE. So what is the distance product is taken over the ground field K, and A op is the algebra which is linearly isomorphic to A, and it's linear as vector spaces. But the product in it of A and B op is given by B times A in A. So in other words, we change the direction, the order in the, in the, in the product. Uh, it is easy to see that this formula, in fact, in fact, defines an associative product in A, another associative product, associative product. So we identify A op with this. So A op is, is this uh, algebra with this product. So here, A e is given by tensor products of A and B. And the product here is given by the following formula. So on the left, I'll get just A, A prime, right? But on the right, I'll have B prime B. That's the relation in AE. Now it is easy to see that every A by model is in fact left AE module. Right? It's just the definition. <laughs> so now I'm going to construct. Hmm? Sorry? A E is, is this. It is this algebra, ah. which is the tensor product of A and A op. Ah, okay. or the opposite algebra. They are usual in. Okay, let, let us show this. So, what do, what do we have? We have this equation A times B times A prime times B prime times M. Right? I want to know that this is equal to this. Right? But what, what do we have on the left? It's precisely A, A prime, tends a B prime B times M. Uh, multiplied by M, right? Which is equal to a, A prime, M, B prime, B. That's on the left. What do we have on the, on the right? It is A tensor B multiplied by A prime, M, B prime, which is equal again to the same. A, A prime, B, M, B prime, B. So you see it is just <laughs> the same. Left model and bimodal are the same things. Yeah. It's the same thing. Okay. Uh, so I'm now going to construct for every M. Sorry, for every. I'm not going to deal with M. Let us consider A is 
uh, an AE module, right? It is bimodal of itself, so it is an AE module. Right, left. What are we going to do now? I'm going to construct a resolution, a projective, even free AE resolution. of A. So I begin with the following description. I begin with the tensor product A, tensor A. Now I'm going to consider A, tensor A, tensor A. Then I'm going to take A, tensor A squared, tensor A, so on. So this is, the, this is P0. This is P1, this is P2, and in general, PK is just A tensor A to the power K tensor A. Of course, PK for every K is a free A model. Not finitely generated, of course. Oh, they didn't, gave, didn't give this fine generateness condition, actually. Uh, when I spoke about uh, in the resolution. OK, nice. Now I need to introduce the, describe the differential, which makes this into the resolution itself, the proper resolution. So first of all, I need to introduce the augmentation, which is easy. It is just a product here, right? And let's take A, B, it will go to A times B. And of course, this is a, a module map. AE module map. What now? I take the, I will denote the um, differential by B prime to distinguish it from a differential in Hochschild complex. So B prime of, um, of an element like this, which I denote by X comma, uh, I'm not going to write down all the tensor products, it will take the whole line very long. I'll just use the bars to distinguish <coughs> elements in different copies of A. So what is B prime? It is just this. It is B, sorry, X A1, A2, AK, Y, plus sum minus 1 to the power i, i from 1 to k minus 1, x. Here we have a i times a i plus 1, y. And finally, we have minus 1 to the power k, <coughs> x, a 1, a k times y. So here is this. Here is the resolution. So let me show that this is in fact a resolution, at least when a has unit in it. Sorry? So I have, first of all, these, these maps are defined, are defined by this b prime. You see? I need to show that B prime squares to zero and that the cohomology of this complex with respect to B prime and augmentation are trivial in all dimensions. Okay? 
So let me prove this. The homology groups are three row. So first of all, why is B prime square equal to zero? But this is easy because B prime square applied to x, say, B1, A2, AK, Y <coughs> is equal to x, A1, A2, AK, Y plus sum minus 1 to the power I, x, uh, sorry, I'm going to apply B prime here, of course, All right? A i, A i plus 1, y plus minus 1 to the power k, x, a, k, y. But when we imply this operator twice, we see, for instance, that there will be x, A1, A2, A, K, Y. And also, an element which appears from the product of X and A1, A2 standing in the second place. Right? But in front of this element, there stands minus sign. So we'll have minus x a1 a2 a k y. So this first term disappears, then all the terms in the middle will vanish because of associativity, because there will be two instances of both a i a i plus 1 and a j a j plus 1 with opposite signs. And finally, the last term will also cancel out with uh, in the same way, pretty much the same way. So this is easy as an exercise. Is an exercise. It's an easy exercise. So let me go on. Now, why is this complex, in fact, a cyclic? To this end, I'm going to at least when a is unital. So suppose what this. I don't know. Suppose that A is unital, then I have the following map. I reach the denoted by K. X, A1, A, K, Y to 1, X, a1, a k, y. So in some sense, this is a map from p k to p k plus one. Right. So what is the relation of this map k and the, the map b prime? So let me compose b prime and k in one direction and in the other. So what is P prime K of X, A1, A, K, Y? It is equal to, so the first term will look like X, A1, A, K, Y. So it's just the original element, right? The second term will look like minus, uh, 1, x, a1, x, uh, a, k, y, and so on, until we come to 1, x, a1, a, k, times y, right? On the other hand, if we take, 
So the sign in this string always changes at every step, alternates at every step. Uh, um, and this actually makes the whole thing look much easier than it looks at first sight. So on the other hand, when we take k and apply it to b prime to x a1 a k y, what do we have? We have precisely this string almost evident. 1 x a1 a k y minus 1 x a1 a2 and so on a k y and so on and then we'll have 1 x a k y so it's precisely this string but the signs are opposite and we see that the following is true b prime k um, uh, plus k b prime is equal to identity and this actually shows that the homology of this complex with respect to the differential b b prime sorry is trivial uh, I mean I, uh, this actually concerns uh, the augmented, augmented uh, complex as well because uh, well it's, it's almost evident right if you take uh, <coughs> an element uh, a in pk such that b prime a is equal to zero right right then it follows directly from this formula that a is equal to b prime of k a so it is not just closed it's exact right and this means that all homology groups are trivial Okay, very nice. We now have this free resolution, well, which is by um, definition is, it, is, is again a projective resolution of A. So we have, have a projective resolution. Uh, of A as AE module, actually left in this case. So what do we do then? We take the tensor product. Uh, so this is left model we need to change left and right, of course, a little bit. Um, but let me uh, skip these details for a while. So we just take M and tensor it over AE with this free module. So what do we get in this case? Of course, it is just isomorphic to m tensor a to the power k and what happens to the differential the differential here should look like one tensor with b prime over a e right so what uh, does it mean it means that if you take m tensor x a1 a k why? So first of all, if you tensor it over M A E, it is the same as uh, M X Y tensor product with A one A K. Right? X and Y always collapse with M 
because of the fact that we take tensor products over the enveloping algebra AE. So this is called enveloping algebra, by the way, AE. It's not the universal enveloping algebra in the theory of Lie groups and Lie algebras. It's just the enveloping algebra in the theory of, homo of, of Hochschild homology. So it is clear that we have this. But if you take the B prime, it will be equal to M tensor A E over B prime, that is to say X A1 A K Y minus X A1 A2 and so on Y and so on. What do we get in this way? You just get first term will look like m uh, y times m times x times a1 tends it with a2 and so on a k right minus y m x tends it a1 a2 and so on a k and the last term will be plus or minus a k y m x tends it with a1 a k minus 1. And that's precisely the Hochschild differential applied to the element of this form. So we see that Hochschild complex C star A comma M is equal, is isomorphic to the tensor product of M with this resolution of the enveloping algebra AE. Hence, Hochschild homology of A with coefficients in M is equal to the extension, extension algebra, so extension groups, sorry, extension, torsion groups of A with coefficients in M over AE. Right. And similarly, a very similar reasoning shows that if you take Hochschild cohomology, you'll end up with extension groups of the same A with coefficients in M over the enveloping algebra AE. So this observation, which is pretty important, although simple, allows us to change the solution, this resolution to compute certain examples. I am going to do this for the symmetric algebra. So we take A equal to the symmetric algebra of certain vector space V. Let me recall that symmetric algebra of a vector space is equal to the quotient of the tensor algebra of this vector space by, by the relations x tensor y minus y tensor x is equal to zero for all x and y's in the vector space. Uh, in particular, if v is equal to what, what, the, what the hell with this? It's not, it's not chalk, it's some kind of powder. It's so brittle, you cannot even use it. Okay, so here we have, if v is equal to Rn, and choosing the basis we can show that SV is in fact isomorphic to the algebra of real polynomials in variables x1 through xn.
So in other words, I am dealing with the polynomial algebras. So I'm going to compute a Hochschild homology of A with coefficients in itself. As I told you last time, when I uh, take the coefficients to be equal to the algebra itself, I uh, use double H in front and omit the coefficients. Well, usually. So to this end, in order to compute it easier, I'll uh, take the following resolution. of A. Uh, I'm going to do it as follows. So first of all, I define, uh, so yeah, OK. Uh, so first of all, I take the exterior algebra of V. Maybe, since we, we are working, I'm dealing with physicists, it is probably better to put a shift here. Because this is now graded algebra for me. In other words, I make I, I, I regard V as an as the space of elements of degree one. So lambda k of V one will consist of elements of degree k. Okay. Then I tensor it with SV on the left and on the right. As you see, this is again a free A enveloping mo module, right? This is free by module in some sense. Free <coughs> SV by model. So the, con the condition uh, of projectiveness is verified. The gradient is taken from this, but now I need to introduce a differential. So the differential is given by the following formula. First of all, I, 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 I observe that um, this is in fact an algebra, so this tensor product is in fact an algebra. Tensor product of algebras is an algebra again. So in a, now in order to uh, define a differential, I am going to use the graded Leibniz rule. This is graded. This is graded algebra. The gradient is, comes from from uh, the middle part. So I'm going to use the Leibniz rule and the following definition that when I deal with some elements f tensor u tensor g, where f and g are some polynomials in V and U belongs to V shifted, right? So it is just a degree one element, right? And then a differential here will be equal to F one U tensor G minus F tensor UG. The shift? It means that I regard, I regard, so V used to be a non-graded space. It was just the vector space concentrated, so to say, in degree zero. Now I regard it as, as the space of elements of degree one. So this is denoted by shift. I think it, I'm using this v, this one properly, right? I just wonder. I think it is is correct. Hmm? It's either plus one or minus. I think it's plus one, correct? Because the correct, it's it's kind of made of a matter of notation. 
But to be on the and I think it is correctly, it's used correctly, yeah. Uh, okay. So now I have this differential. It is easy to see that d square is equal to zero. Well, for instance, I, I think it's easy to do this. Um, when I, for instance, if I take elements of degree two in the middle, d applied d squared applied to f tensor x tensor u which v tensor g. What is it equal to? It is equal to. Uh, so first of all, it is d applied to d of f tensor u which v tensor g. Right? So what do we have in the middle? As I explained, uh, we use the uh, Leibniz rule, the great Leibniz rule for this. So this element is equal to the product of f tensor u tensor g and 1 tensor v tensor 1, right? So it means that when I apply d to it, I obtain f tends a u tends a g. Uh, sorry, f f u tends a g minus f tends a u g multiplied. <coughs> Uh, when I don't have tens in the middle, it mean, I don't have one in the, anything in the middle. It just means that I actually can see the one here, right? Uh, probably better to write it like this: uh, u one tens of g minus f tens of one tens of u g. So probably it is more correct. It is more appropriate way to write it. <clears throat> okay. So what do we and multiplied by one tens of v tens of one minus f tens of u tens of g. This we use minus because uh, we go we, we, this this we, we make make d go across the element of degree one, right? And here we have u again. Uh, v tens of 1 tens of 1 minus 1 tens of 1 tens of v. So it is equal to f u tens of v tens of g minus f tensor v tensor u g, right, plus, I'm sorry, minus f v tensor u tensor g, and plus f tensor u tensor v g. Again, but when we apply differential to this sum again, like differential, what do we get? We get f u v tends a g. I'm emitting this one in the middle minus f. Uh, u tends a v g minus f v tends a u g uh, plus f tends a v u g uh, 
minus f v u tends a g plus f v u g minus uh, minus plus sorry f u tends a v g finally minus f tends a u v g now the product in S V is commutative, so this element cancels out with this element, this with this, and the remaining two terms, two elements again, vanish. So we get zero. In general, case actually appears from this case because, uh, in fact, of course, you can. Uh, if you take v equal to the direct product of v prime plus v double prime, then our construction verifies the following property. I'm omitting the shift. Uh, um, so let me denote it by k of v. k of v will be equal to the tensor product of k of v prime with k of v double prime. The tensor product is taken in the graded sense, of course. In the graded sense. So you can actually now repeat everything for the one-dimensional case, since you can actually decompose every vector space in the direct sum of one-dimensional subspaces. And the same way, same, uh, same idea, idea shows that uh, these complexes are cyclic. I'm not going to go into details. It's, it, it takes some time to uh, construct the constructing homotopy here, but it, it is possible. You can do this. It's not uh, that easy because this uh, you can you need to take into account the various. Uh, degrees of elements in uh, 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 polynomial algebra, but it is possible, this is doable. Okay, so does it give us We want to compute the Hochschild homology of A, where A is SV. We can actually take the following tensor product. Uh, S of V tensor over S of V enveloping with K of V, which is, of course, just isomorphic to S of V tensor with lambda star of v shifted, right? The differential here is easy to compute. So the differential here uh, is induced from <coughs> the tensor product of, the, of differential with the, with the identity map. And when you apply it to element of the form f tends a u h phi times v u and v oh sorry it's not probably the best thing to do probably something like this will be better uh, p some polynomial p tends it with phi the wedge product tends it with q some polynomial right what does it give us? So first of all, this is the same as P, F, Q, tends it with phi, right? So suppose phi is just of degree one. That's sufficient because as I explained, uh, the differential is given by the Leibniz rule. So if we have zero, it has some very nice formula for degree one elements. We can extend it from degree one to anything by using the same Leibniz rule. 
So it will be equal to what? It will be equal to f tends at with p v p u tends at q minus p tends at with u q, which is the same as f p u q minus <coughs> p f u q. But the product is commutative in the algebra of polynomials. So this is just, this is always equal to zero. So we see that this, um, this, cohomology, this, this cohomology is equal to the cohomology of this complex. is equal to the complex itself because this complex has zero differential, right? This complex has zero differential. On the other hand, <coughs> let us define for any algebra, commutative algebra A, so let A be any commutative algebra. We define its Keller differentials to be equal to, this, to the space of formal sums of the form a i d b i <coughs> finite sums where a i and b i are from a. And d verifies the only condition d a b is equal to a d b plus d d a. So A is commutative, and it doesn't matter whether I write A first or B first. So it doesn't, ma it doesn't matter any at all. <coughs> See if A is equal to uh, the symmetric algebra, then it is easy exercise to see that omega A will be isomorphic to SV tangent with lambda star, uh, sorry, with v shifted, v shifted. This is called A1, by the way, A1. More generally, if I take A n of A to be equal to the exterior product of A1 of A over A, Right? So if you are not familiar with this notation, then it is equal to the tensor algebra, tensor algebra of the module omega 1 of A, where I take the tensor products over A, quotient by the relation that U tensor V is equal to minus V tensor U for any two elements in A omega 1. And it is clear that omega n of SV will be isomorphic to SV tends it with lambda n of V shifted. Moreover, I have a map, an explicit map from the usual Hochschild complex to this space omega n of a. So consider this map, consider the map. Uh, I've denoted by chi. It's a map from the Hochschild complex of a with coefficients in a where a is commutative. into this differential, space of differential n, oh, sorry, it will be n here. Differential n forms on A. It takes an element A0 tensor A1 
and the a n and sends it to a zero d a one which 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 and so on d a n right uh, now what I have just proved using this resolution is the following theorem which is the simplest form of the hochschild koston rosenbeck theorem. hochschild koston rosenbeck koston rosenbeck theorem. Chi is induces isomorphism in uh, cohomology, in homology, sorry. If A is equal to SV. Now, of course, I didn't pay attention to the, uh, uh, the explicit form of the map, which is just this isomorphism, but uh, well, I leave it as an exercise for you to show that the elements. <clears throat> oh, in fact, it's just um, this map. This map here is just the map which uh, sends the given resolution, the short resolution, which is sometimes called Kostel resolution, into the canonical resolution, the Hochschild resolution, and that's just it. Oh yeah, vice versa. Sorry, the, the, the no, 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 not 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 into canonical, but vice versa, canonical into Kosher. Okay. A canonical is the one which is used originally by 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 Hochschild, by anybody. Uh, it's just the map which induces this, which 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 is from one resolution from one resolution to another, and that's all. Um, in fact, I can show more generally, more generally, more generally, uh, if A is equal to, let me formulate it like this. The following algebra, C x1. So the algebra of polynomials with m uh, with m variables, quotient by certain relations of polynomial nature. So I need here an ideal polynomial ideal. Any uh, ideal. Let's assume that, uh, so let this be given by some polynomials f1 through fk. And suppose, suppose that the variety determined, uh, the variety in Cm determined by these polynomials f1 through fm is smooth smooth uh, in the usual sense then uh, Hochschild homology of A will be isomorphic to the differential space of Keller differential forms of A so Actually, one can um, give a very formal definition of smooth algebras. 
a very formal definition in terms of relations and generators that there should exist a very a, a set of generators of A with uh, some good properties. In this case, one calls the algebra A, the commutative algebra A, smooth. And in fact, this hochschild kostner rosenberg theorem holds for all smooth algebras in that sense. Now that's pretty long and, gem and uh, an algebraic way to define uh, commutative, uh, smooth commutative algebras. I think it is much more geometric to look at on, on this picture from this point of view. Of course, this condition that the variety is smooth as a, as a, as a, as a surface, as a hypersurface in uh, some Euclidean space is pretty restrictive. But it's, pretty, but it's very geometric and very intuitively clear. Okay, so duali dualizing this construction. It's just can some, some equation. You just write down some equation, and if you get in the end some smooth manifold as the set of zeros of these equations, set of common zeros of these equations, then you can say that your algebra is smooth, in fact. I believe that algebraic. Um, this, this condition is very restrictive, and I think that if you formulate the definition of smooth commutative algebra in, um, very, in, in, in the accurate strict sense, in rigorous sense, then of course all these algebras will be smooth, but not vice versa. Not every smooth algebra in the sense of the algebraic definition would come from some smooth variety in some complex space. But I don't think that's really important for a while. Uh, dualizing, dually. Um, well, we can use the same uh, resolution to show to compute the Hochschild cohomology of the algebra SV. So what do we do? We take this Hochschild complex K of V and consider the space of bimodal maps from this causal complex into A itself, right? Since this is free, it is isomorphic to a tensor product of SV. And the exterior uh, powers and the space of exterior powers of the shifted dual space. I think it should be shifted in the opposite direction. So up to the change of, uh, well, sine from plus to minus, I can say that I, what I have is a space of polynomial polyvector fields, of polynomial polyvector fields on V. Uh, yeah. I'll probably V check. And again, we have a map, also called the Hochschild Kosten Rosenberg map, from the space of polyvector fields on V check into uh, probably not on V check, sorry, on V. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On V. Uh, into, uh, oh, it's a bit confusing. I think uh, the, this, there's some difference between functions on, on V. So polynomials are functions on V check. So what I have here are polyvector fields on V check. All right, finally, right? And I think it is better, I don't know if it is, yeah. 
V check means a dual space. Just a dual space. No, 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 for, for the space V in the linear sense. So I think it should be V check still. But I will not distinguish between V and V check for you, just to, to save some the trouble of notation. Into the Hochschild complex of SV with coefficients in SV again. Uh, now the direction is opposite. And the map is given by the following formula. If you take some polyvector field, let it be uh, P, P capital, then it's the, 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 the map, the value of its image on the tensor product F1, F K, let it be a K vector field. And we have a K cochain here, right? So the space of K cochain is space of all homomorphisms from SV the tensor power to the K tensor power into SV, right? So these are the arguments of this map. And I say that it is equal to the contraction of this polyvector field P with the batch product of df1, dfk, in the usual sense. In the usual sense. And what I have just proved, this hochschild kosten rosenberg theorem can be formulated as follows. A cohomological theorem, a cohomological hochschild kosten rosenberg theorem. Yeah, for any smooth algebra A, the hochschild kosten rosenberg map from the space of poly vector fields K uh, on A, well, whatever it means, it's just some, it is, it is a construction dualizing the construction of Kelly differential forms, right? Into Hochschild complex induces an isomorphism in cohomology. Well, in particular, if A is equal to SV. I think it is a good exercise for everybody to check that the image of hochschild kosten rosenberg map is always a closed element in the hochschild kosten in hochschild complex. In co yeah, co-chain hochschild complex. Yeah.